Hello, business building warrior. Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I'm your host for the opening comments today. I'll be turning it over to Brian and Robin Joy Olson, two great coaching leaders on our team. In just a moment, they have a Coach's Corner episode for us today. That's where we make observations about the successful coaching students and the struggling coaching students in our program, the questions they're asking, the challenges they're facing, and we dive into those. So it's kind of like getting a little mini coaching session on a podcast. I'll bring them on in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about a couple of recent announcements. First, the Proven Conference tickets. You've heard us talking about it for a while now. If you're new around here, you need to know we've got a conference coming up in May of 2024 in Orlando, Florida. We'd love for you to be a part of it. You're going to see hundreds of members of our community, listeners to this podcast, students of the Proven Amazon course. They're all going to be there and you're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be 40 breakout sessions specifically designed to help you go from where you are now to earning more money using the internet creatively. If you're brand new, you need to be there. If you're seasoned and you have a multiple seven-figure business, you need to be there. The partnerships, the masterminds, the camaraderie. Hey, if you get a VIP ticket, we're actually going to assign you to a VIP mastermind group that will meet at the event and we'll get you guys launched so you can meet on a regular basis, encourage each other and help each other grow. One of the advantages of picking up a VIP ticket. The details are at theprovenconference.com. That's the website. There's a link in the show notes, theprovenconference.com. Three words, go check it out. The other thing is we just launched, as you're hearing this, it was a week ago today, we just launched our provenazinfluencer.com program. If you don't know what that is, we've got many people who have never made any money online who are starting to do this thing and they are building beautiful income streams, residual income streams, getting paid by Amazon to simply upload videos to amazon.com. That's right. You don't have to share it on social media. You don't have to send out an email list. You don't have to do anything. You record videos with your smartphone talking about products that you already like and use. You upload those videos to Amazon, you're done, you get paid. That's it. Sounds too simple to be true. That's how easy it is. We've heard numerous numerous people who have been doing this, having failed at many of the things that are really loving this program. And I'm talking thousands of dollars per month within a few months in many cases. Get over to provenazinfluencer.com. The AZ stands for Amazon. You're going to see we've got some coaches in there who are doing this at a high level. And for very low cost, we'll teach you everything we need. We know about this. You'll get into a group of other people who are doing it, sharing very openly how it works. So be sure to check that out. All right, let's talk about today's show real quick. I love the topic that Brian and Robin Joy selected. I'm not going to steal any thunder from them, but I love that approach of looking at your business from a worst case, best case scenario. If you're smart about the business entities that you invest in or that you start to uh, pursue yourself, you always want to be analyzing what's the worst that could happen, what's the best that could happen. And one of the reasons that Brian and Robin Joy explained today that we really love starting the vast majority of all of our new students at the same point is because we've identified on Amazon the lowest risk, highest odds of building a sustainable long-term business model. And we've launched many other businesses off of that. Many other income streams can be built on that. But we love the replens model for the reasons that you're about to hear about today and we're going to dive into that also how many you should how many units you should be sending in to test when you find a new asin a new product how many units should i send in how do i make my decisions about my risk tolerance there how confident can i be that i'm not going to lose money it's a great themed topic today and i think you're really going to enjoy diving into it and they also cover uh, what the one vital skill is the only one missing component that you'll have once you're in our community and exposed to the content and training we have, there's only one thing and you've got to bring that yourself. And they're going to tell you what that is. We bring everything else to you. So I'm excited to have them on our show today. Again, they do such a great job. Let me just give them a, a, a quick uh, observation about working with Brian and Robin Joy. Many of you have given us feedback saying you just love hearing from them. And I think it's because one, they have such giving, caring hearts. They're very transparent. They tell it like it is. They came from a place just a couple of years ago of being clueless about this, and they built a beautiful business. Uh, but they do this all day, every day. They are coaching students who come through our program, so they know what's happening in the real world. 
I spend less time these days coaching students. I more coach the coaches. I work with them because we've got 60 coaches at this point, but they are on the ground in the trenches where the rubber meets the road, doing it all day, every day in their own business and teaching others along with all of our other great coaching leaders and coaches. So those are some of the best people that you can spend some time with and get some really in-depth training. I love doing the podcast episodes where we interview the successful students from our community. We've got hundreds of proven Amazon course success story students. I love doing those interviews, but I also love these episodes where we get down into the weeds, give you some specific details. So enjoy this time with Brian and Robin Joy Olson. And by the way, if you want to come see them, come to the conference in May, the Proven Conference. Actually, a little quick note about that before I turn it over to them. Sorry for the lengthy announcements today, but this is very important. The Proven Conference happens May 23rd through 25th. I already told you about that. But if you want to come hang out with Brian and Robin Joy, who you're about to meet, for two days prior to the event in a small workshop setting and learn how to find 100 ASINs, 100 test-worthy products that you can sell against, two days. That's the goal. Come hang out with us. Call our coaching office to set up a conversation with us about that. You can go to silentgym.com slash book a call, all one word, and set up a call. Or you can go to this website, provenamazoncourse.com slash 100. Those links will be in the show notes today. ProvenAmazonCourse.com slash 100 is the 100 ASIN workshop that's coming up in May. And you can get the details, fill out an application, see if it's a good fit for you. We'd love to talk to you about that. All right, let's get Brian and Robin Joy on the line right now. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome back to Silent Sales Machine Radio. We are your co-hosts. I'm Brian. And I'm Robin Joy. This is Coach's Corner. Hey, Brian, you had a question from a client this morning, or this week, I guess, yeah. and you wanted to share that with us. I did. Yeah, this was a great question. New client who, who came in. We've been getting a lot of new coaching clients. Love the amount of people that are really seeking out some, some custom guidance here. But the first thing was, hey, just give it to me straight. Just tell me what's the worst case scenario, what's the best case scenario, and just lay it out for me. Yeah, so what would you tell them? Well, I love the question because it really does give me an indication of what that person's thinking about, okay, where I'm going to go with this. And what I the, the answer, thankfully, I mm-hmm. thought was so spot on because you and I have talked about this so many times. We've mm-hmm. coached so many clients with the same philosophy and the same method that it just made a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. Basically, I want we want to talk about the downside, you know, what's the worst that can happen. But we also want to talk about how do we mitigate that risk from the worst happening, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so what we do is we raise the bar on what is the worst that can happen. Instead of it being like negative, we make it zero or or better, right? Right. We um, try, yeah, we try to find, find ev- evidence that we're going to get all our money back, right? Right. And then we also want to preserve the upside. Uh potential with that. Yeah, that's true. A lot of times, if people are looking to mitigate the the downside, they also end up mitigating. Yeah, reducing the upside. Right. In this system, you don't have to do that. Right. So so I took the opportunity to explain the three-step check and the four-week test. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the the three-step check, it's actually, we could argue, we could even break it down to two steps at this point, but it sounds sure. so good when we, and it rolls <laughs> off the tongue so good, right? Assuming well, that- you a starting place. Right. Assuming yeah. we've got a sufficient sales velocity, the number one thing we want to do is ensure that we have capital protection built in. So, right. So capital protection being the lowest price that we've seen this item selling for over the last 90 days is above our break-even price. Right. right. If it's going down for seven days or more, if it's just blipping down, we're not going to worry about that. Right. Yeah. Because right. it'll come back up. If it comes back up within, you know, less than 10 day period, we know we can usually wait that out. Right. So that gives us evidence of what it would be if we had to go down on our price and get out of it, mm-hmm. that we wouldn't lose money. So we're looking for that evidence, no guarantees, but we're looking for that evidence. And that will give us a lot more confidence in testing. Along with a couple of other things, right? Right. right. So then the second thing, uh, the second part of that it, to preserve the upside mm-hmm. is ident- making sure that we're only going to test in ASINs where the upside meets our requirements. Mm-hmm. So if the upside was only 8%, regardless of where our break even was, that we had capital preservation, mm-hmm. then it then, might not be worth it to us. Then to it's do probably it not going to be worth it, right? Okay. Um, right. But if that upside potential is 
30, 40, 80, 100%, mm-hmm. then that's those are the kind of ASINs that we want to test. So how do we see that evidence? Well, Keepa is our friend mm-hmm. in this situation, right? Mm-hmm. In In the beginning, it's not going to be intuitive. So with brand new clients, we have them look and see the last 90 days. What's the highest it's shown a price and during the last 90 days, even if it was for a moment, you've seen it's been there. You've seen that, you know, someone thought that price was something and Amazon allowed it. I would start with that price or higher. And, and you know, I can always go down on my price if it, if it doesn't sell at that. But I want to see, the only way I'm going to see if I can sell it at a higher price is to test it at a higher put price. It to, and put it at a higher price. Okay. Yeah. So, but we don't want to just put it out there and like nine months later, check back on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> right? You're right. <laughs> that that could be the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> that could be. <laughs> we we could end up with all kinds of storage fees and the thing we're not paying attention right. and it gets away from us. So what we do is we like to put a four week window on this test. So mm-hmm. after the item becomes available, then we're going to let it hang out, hang around out there for four weeks. Mm-hmm. We can move our price around during that four week window mm-hmm. to kind of see where we might get some, mm-hmm. where we might get a sale. And we do have a, a real system, a system for that. that. Yeah, um, we, we can get into details on that. We do in the uh, workshop that mm-hmm. we're doing May 21st and 22nd. There is a system for that. We're not going to get totally into it today, but basically we start high, leave it there for about a week. If it doesn't sell, go down a little bit, mm-hmm. it doesn't sell, go down a little bit. And hopefully it sells somewhere in here. If not, you've protected your downside. But we do want to see that we can make that decision within 30 to 45 days. So velocity how fast this ASIN is moving is something we want evidence of as yep. well. Yep. So we're actually probing for the best case scenario mm-hmm. by testing over this four-week period. Right. And you, it's your business, have complete control over deciding, well, maybe you want to give it another week. Mm-hmm. Maybe some, yeah, you know, absolutely. maybe something happened while that ASIN was on the way and, you know, you see it's on the rebound and, okay, so you want to give another week. That's totally your call, your discretion yes. to do that. Just, it's nice to have a system to work within to then be able to override that system as opposed right. to just kind of flying blind. Especially before you have any experience. Yeah. Once you build in some experience, you've seen these these same things happen over and over. You can then start saying, okay, I've seen this before. I'm mm-hmm. going to leave it for another few days because I think this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Or I've seen this before and I'm going to go ahead and pull my money out of this one and put it in something else. Experience will tell you. But again, just like you don't know how much it's going to sell for, Mm -hmm. unless you test it at a higher price, you don't know if you can sell it at a higher price. Yep. You don't know, you don't get that experience unless you actually go through the cycles of sending inventory into Amazon and testing the prices on it. Right. There's one other thing I mentioned about mitigating the risk while preserving the upside. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is one of the core tenets of the proven systems that that exist here in the proven Amazon course mm-hmm. and the and the My Silent Team Facebook group, and that is the inch deep, mile wide philosophy. Yes. So we're taking our inventory, our capital, and we're spreading that over many ASINs, over many categories and brands, making sure that we're maintaining that inch deep, mile wide. That's going to ensure that's a big part of mitigating our risk as well. Yes. Yes. Right. Agreed. That keeps our risk low. Let's us get to know this business before we really are into it so deep that we are, you know, risking too much of our money at a time. Right. Right. So, and the coolest thing is it makes total logical sense. And the coaching client I was working with at the time was was taking notes like that makes total sense. Uh Now I feel much more comfortable when I'm doing my evaluation process and like, okay, I'm mitigating my risk. I'm preserving Mm -hmm. my upside. Yes, let's go. I can. I, it makes it easier for me to to make things happen, to pull the mm-hmm. trigger on things. Right? Yeah, I've had the same experience with some clients that have used this system, mitigated their risk, and um, protected their capital. And then they get in, and you know, it's a few weeks before you really see that turnover. Some of them work out, some of them don't. Mm-hmm. And then this this particular client said, "Well, I've got a lot of money in this, and I'm really nervous about it." And I reminded them. You've protected your capital. You have pretty good evidence mm-hmm. that you're going to get all your money back. Mm-hmm. So calm down. It's okay. Yep. Let's just let it play out. And some of those will win. Some of them won't. But you're going to get a lot of experience while it happens. I think I know exactly what you're talking about. And mm-hmm. within a couple of weeks, it was like we were on the phone with them. And she's like, my business is blowing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. Yeah. And it, that's more than one client that that yeah. happened with. But right. yeah, exactly. That's the case. So have confidence in the fact that you have protected yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, there are no guarantees, but it's not going to all go. Some some things may not come out the way you, you expected them to. But that's why we go inch deep, mile wide. Exactly. So one can make up for the other. Right. right? Yeah. So, OK, great. Great okay. topic. I love that one. This kind of ties into a question that you got from one of your coaching mm -hmm. clients. And this was someone who I think did have a large amount of capital. And they were like, I sent in 30 tests in mm -hmm. my first week. And unfortunately, most of them didn't work out. How did you address that? Sure. Well, this was, this was a client that came to me after they'd already sent in 30 tests without mm -hmm. any guidance of how to test those items, mm -hmm. right? How to protect capital, how to make sure you had velocity that would help you make that decision quickly, how you make sure that you have a good upside to test, mm -hmm. right? So when you are testing, we really, really do recommend, yeah, 30 tests is no problem after a couple of shipments, mm -hmm. but at least do two or three shipments with about five ASINs to even if you want to do more, if you do five, that's going to be plenty, and you're going to be able to get. If you're consistent, you're going to be able to get to to what your meet your goals. But don't do thirty in the first week. Do a few to start with. In fact, I encourage people to do it one time, which is what we do in the Kickstart Boot Camp. After that, do about five for a couple of weeks until you kind of know that you've found some of the things that might go wrong because it's not intuitive in the first few shipments. It's really not. I don't know how many times clients come to me, we work together and we say, okay, here's what you're looking for. Okay. I understand that they go back. Then they come and show me the ASINs that they found the next week. Mm -hmm. And there's one tiny little thing, just a tiny thing, an obvious thing, a thing that goes wrong a lot of times, but that one thing, if they'd sit in 30 without having somebody to look at it first or having some some kind of testing of themselves first might have really, really put them at risk. So I do recommend that if you are going to test a lot and use a lot of capital, that you start really small, just like we test each ASIN really small, test your business small, test your skills, make sure you've got this down. And the only way to really know is to test you know, test small and make sure you've got it before you put too much into it. So what I'm hearing you say is that if there's a systemic problem in your sourcing method yeah, and you sent in 30 tests, all mm -hmm. 30 tests are going to be impacted by that yes. systemic problem Yes. versus if we've got a, if we've got a systemic problem when we sent in five tests over the course of a couple of weeks or, you know, five tests a week, you know, two to three weeks in, we can make corrections much faster, much more mm -hmm. quickly when we're starting to get that feedback from Amazon after a couple of weeks, right? Sometimes right. in as little as two weeks, we are already getting feedback, that mm -hmm. system that we're going through. Mm -hmm. We're getting feedback and we're making adjustments then to, you know, on the the 15, the five, the five, week three, basically, those mm -hmm. five tests that would be 15. Yes. And then you're getting better with your 20 and 25 and 30. And by the time and, you get to 30, if you're doing that over six weeks, well, you just got it pretty dialed in. Right. And then you're going to be much more comfortable going to 60 if you've got the capital exactly. and the time, yeah. going to 80, 100 at a, a test at a time. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have some replenishments to, to put in there at the same time, starting to build that balance mm -hmm. for those tests. So the ones that don't work out, they you might make a little bit of money. Most times we don't see people losing money on tests if they use the system. but it can happen. Mm -hmm. So okay. a lot of times we see much more times that people make more profit than they thought they were going to on that ASIN. That's usually what happens. So this reminds me of at one point early on, we had a discussion about the governors that exist in, mm -hmm. in a business. And just to quickly recap there at the time, we talked about three governors in the business. One of them is cash. Mm -hmm. One of them is time. And a third one was ASINs. Mm -hmm. I think we can add a fourth one to that list, which is knowledge. Yes. Right? Or yes. experience. 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 Yes. And because well, we don't know what we don't know. Exactly. So in the, that is a governor for everyone when they're just starting out. Mm -hmm. And rather than blowing the, your engine, mm -hmm. right, by, you know, sending in 30 or 40 tests in your first week, mm -hmm. you know, go small to, yep. to get that start knowledge. Start first gear. Yep. <laughs> go, go, go through, yeah, exactly. Instead of trying to start in fourth gear. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. That's a, That's a good way to have a 
a problem with your car, mm -hmm. don't start in fourth gear. Start in first gear. Mm -hmm. You can quickly move up to fourth gear. Just start in first gear. <laughs> yes. We're speaking to some people who probably don't have never had to shift gears before. <laughs> yeah, that's, some of them, I'm sure, but yeah. we've seen it so many times uh -huh. that we feel necessary to, to mention it. Right. So, all right. Okay, good. Well, you and I had a, a very compelling, I thought, conversation at mm -hmm. some point over the weekend. This didn't come specifically from a coaching client. We like to pull questions from those. But this was more like if you were to witness a behind the scenes mm -hmm. of a coaching like a first or second coaching session, mm -hmm. right? Kind of what that looks like. This is, I think, when we were putting together from some material for some content that we're working on, mm -hmm. and you really came up with, you really nailed the concept here. So tell us, tell us what came up. Well, what's interesting to me about this, and what's compelling about what we have here, not only on the Amazon platform, but it's specifically in this community, <laughs> the MS, my silent team Facebook group. The proven Amazon course members. Yes. Okay. The systems for successful Amazon businesses are already in the proven Amazon course. Mm -hmm. Like the we've solved for how. And I say we because we've contributed and to that. As a community, and right. we're as con as creators who have put you know courses out into the proven Amazon course, as Jim has shared. Right. Um, as other as members people of people have answered questions in the Facebook yeah, group. The Facebook group. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've heard we've heard so many interviews on Silent Sales Machine Radio mm -hmm. yeah. where people have given us their tips and tricks. Yeah. The how has been solved. Right. Whether it's the replens course, whether it's the bot scraping course, the advanced keep a course, the mm -hmm. Lego course, the right. discontinued items course, the brand of bundles course, the proven product partnering course. And I'm sure I'm leaving off. 20 more courses that are in proven sure. Amazon course that show you exactly how to do this. And there are new ones and updates to those and new tips and tricks that we learn all the time as part of this community. So it's not a problem of, I got to figure out how to do this. Right. I mean, there's no shortage of blueprints that exist in the proven Amazon course on how to be successful in this business, leveraging a wide variety of strategies and methods. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally paint by number solutions, processes yes. that you can follow mm -hmm. all in the Proven Amazon course. Mm -hmm. Follow this process and you will be successful. We do recommend if you haven't done it before that you start with the replens course and you know begin at the beginning, mm -hmm. but you can quickly move from there once you get some experience and learn the platform. Okay, and let me just take a quick rabbit trail into the why do we start with replens? Off, off script, you go. Off script, okay. <laughs> I don't know about you, but back when I, in my younger days, we went to Vegas a few times and I remember walking into a casino mm -hmm. and playing blackjack for a dollar or $5 a hand. Yes. And at the time still feeling like $5, hmm, I'm not sure I was really comfortable, <laughs> right? but I had a strategy, I had a method and worst case I broke even. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, so I felt comfortable doing that. You won a few, you lost a few, but overall you came back. With what you went in with. I'm not suggesting you should go to Las Vegas <laughs> right. and gamble. Okay. Um, and it, it, the tables are probably way, way more expensive well, now anyway. Fact, that's what I was going to say is the last time we were in Vegas, I had sticker shock on, like, <laughs> I could not find a $5 table to play at, right? It Which was like, ear. it was like $25, $50 a hand, <laughs> right? I had to struggle to find a $10 table. And even then I was like, I'm not sure I trust I, that I remembered enough of my system, so to speak, <laughs> to sit down and, and put $10 a hand on, on blackjack, right? Yeah. Okay. So what I like to say is like the replens portion, the OA simplified portion, the, there's a lot of things that are in the proven Amazon course that are what I would call lower table stakes, mm -hmm. right? You can play for a dollar hand. You can play for $5 mm -hmm. a hand. Mm -hmm. Easy. And you can start to learn how that system works with Amazon, mm -hmm. build up some additional capital so that then you can go into those more expensive tables, maybe the high roller room if you're going to do sure. private label, right? Or any number of comparisons exist mm -hmm. uh, about that space. But there are literally thousands of success stories littering the MST Facebook group for mm -hmm. people who started in the replen space, mm -hmm. people who have graduated into other things as well, whether it's branded bundles, private label, um, wholesale, PPP, mm -hmm. just tons and tons of success stories out yes. there. So we've solved for the how to be successful doing this, but there is right. one missing ingredient. Mm -hmm. And that ingredient is you, you. and your why. Yeah. 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 So the systems are there, but you 
won't have the success until you plug yourself into the systems. Mm -hmm. The proven Amazon course is a great way to do that because there's a great place to start. There's a great place. There's a great path to move through the proven Amazon course and some choices as you go. Plenty you of don't choices. have to fit into one little spot. Plenty of variety. Mm -hmm. The single and most important missing ingredient, ingredient, as we said, is you and your why. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to do this? Mm -hmm. you know, what's, why will this be the number one thing that you get done this year? Mm -hmm. Are you going to dedicate yourself to your own success? Yeah. Right? Do you have the drive and the dedication and the consistency? And maybe the coaching, if you want someone to hold your hand, if you would like yeah. someone to hold your hand. Not only do you get all that information, but you also have the ability to have someone hold your hand and work with you and your specific skills and your business and your capital requirements and your, well, this your is requirements. Good, a good question. Like if all that stuff exists out there in the proven Amazon course, why do I need a coach? Because, because you have your own unique skills specialties and capabilities. You have your own history, your own abilities that are different than anyone else's. I like to say this is why there's room for all of us because we're all going to put a little bit different spin on it. Mm -hmm. We all have different time requirements, different our families look different. We are going to be doing this either in in different times of our lives. So because of this, you're going to have different struggles than anyone else does. You're going to need accountability to be able to, to work. So a coach can really help you work out ideas to help you make your business better. I, I like one other thing about this. And I, I had a perspective concept that I shared in a, in a recent podcast about being able to observe someone else's, mm -hmm. you know, challenges and problems and give them great advice. Mm -hmm. um, same thing for us in the coaching space, or even as individuals, mm -hmm. it's very difficult at times to know, to see the things that we are good at. When right. someone comes up to me and says, you're really good at this. And I'm sometimes shocked, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Because you I, didn't feel so confident. I don't. I don't. I, you didn't even realize you or, had that skill. Or it's not that I was not confident. It's just like it's just part it of my everyday you. life, right? It's so ingrained in me, I can't see it. But I guarantee you something: a coach can see that in you, right? And this is the benefit that you get from having a coach who can observe and say, you know what? You're really good at the analysis part. Mm -hmm. You're really good at the the financial management. You're really good at dealing with customers. You're really and then. Out of that, you will have this, this evolution of your business that this is why, what you were saying a minute ago, this is what makes it different for every person who's doing mm -hmm. this because we all have our own unique skill set. And there is an exercise that, that you can go through. And I said, you know, I would encourage you all to do it. Mm -hmm. Go ask 10, 15 people that you, or th that you know, mm -hmm. that you've worked with, that are your family, acquaintances, friends, whatever, and ask them, what am I good at? What do you what do you what do you think are the the top two things? And it's not that you're fishing for compliments. Like maybe even just send it an email and like, you know, mm -hmm. tell me two things you think I'm good at. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start seeing the responses and you will start seeing some commonalities in there mm -hmm. too. And exactly. then you kind of know where your skill set is and this is what Yeah, I mean sometimes this this happens and I realize, oh, everybody doesn't do that. Everybody mm -hmm. doesn't have that. That seems easy for me. So I thought everybody yeah, did it. Exactly. Right. And you, you'll have those things. You told me a story about when you were a little kid and you got your first pair of glasses. Yes. You thought everyone saw the I same way you did or third didn't. Grade. I was in third grade and I remember going to church after I got my first pair of glasses and I could see the preacher's face. I could see what he was saying. Like, mm -hmm. I got used to this this blurry form moving around that I didn't understand. It was amazing to me. I didn't realize how people can see. I didn't realize you could see like that. Yeah. Well, you thought everyone saw like you. I thought everyone saw like I did. I right. had no no way to know any different. We th we all think everyone has the same things that we do, except when they're, you know, annoying to us. And we're yeah. like, oh, I'm glad I'm not like that. Right. The real that's secret true. is you probably are like that. And that's why <laughs> you don't like possibly, it. But, very possibly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the missing ingredient is you. The systems are out there. Mm -hmm. You can go pick them up and execute on them mm -hmm. solo or with a partner, or you can get a coach. Yes. And many ways to do there this. There are, yeah. And regardless, the community is there. Regardless of the way that you do it, mm -hmm. do it. 
yeah, we really encourage you to do it. If this is something that you want to do, dig in, get that done. 2024 is the year. There's nothing like seeing big smile on someone's face yeah. when we get into a coaching session and they're like, I had my best week of sales ever. Yes. Right. I also love that that smile on their face when they go, oh, <laughs> oh, that's how you have how you get this done. It kind of clicks. Yeah. That's just so fun to see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. We're going to wrap this up with a, with with a, a quote. Yes. yes. What you got for us today, Brian? It fits in so well with everything we've been talking about. And this quote comes to us from Marie Forleo. Mm-hmm. She says, one of the most underrated secrets to success is to start before you're ready. Yeah. So hey, all these things we were just talking about, the getting off to a fast start, the, you know, w- waiting, the what's my, you know, worst case, best case scenario, all that stuff doesn't really matter until you start. Yep. And so you may not know the whole landscape and that's okay. You don't know what you don't know. Get started and find out what you don't know. It's just in time learning. Yes. It's just, you'll figure it out as you go. Yes. Necessity. It'll come to you. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yes. Right. As they say. So when you are struggling to dis, to, you know, I don't know, find, find a profitable ace. And when you're struggling with a return. I've seen a lot of test where the we're currently as we're recording this in January, when you're struggling with returns Mm -hmm. with bogus reasons or even legitimate reasons, and you really feel like it's impacting your business, you know, what solves that problem. Find more aces, test more more aces. aces. All right, well, let's go get some more aces. Let's go get some more. Thanks everybody. We'll see you soon. Talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for joining us for today's episode. Before I let you go, we like to do this once a week or so, bring on my good friend, Mr. Jeff Schick, and he's got a new partner on his team to introduce to you today as well. I'm looking forward to diving into hearing some legal and policy advice from our good friend, Mr. Jeff Schick. What's on your mind today, my friend? So I wanted to introduce, we've got Leah. A lot of y'all know her from the, uh, I think it's OA Simplified course that she did as part of us. A great leader in our community. Now she's... Yes. So now she's taking her uh, experience and has joined our team. You know, I've known Leah for close to four years now. And uh, yeah, just really excited to have her uh, as part of our team. So she is our new director of client success. And her whole goal is just to make sure that, you know, clients have are successful and that we could, you know, help them as well as we can. So any ideas that people have, you know, I welcome them to reach out to Leah if they think of things that we can do to better serve our, our community and better serve our clients. Yeah, that is Leah's goal is she's there to help us develop new product ideas and, and help, you know, serve our clients the best we can. So yes, with that, I'll let you say hello. So how's the new gig going, Leah? It's going great. Um, I, it's incredibly interesting. I feel like if we've been around for a hot minute, we kind of sometimes get a little complacent and we're like, I, I feel like I know account health pretty well. And then being, um, I've been with Jeff now for two and a half, two, two-ish weeks, give or take. And it doesn't take a lot of exposure to see like everybody's collective experience with account health to make you feel like you have a lot to learn. So um, there have been um, scenarios I've seen in the last couple of weeks that I've not heard of in four years. So um, not only is it really gratifying to be able to help people in like a new capacity, but it's for, you know, selfishly, it's been a really incredible learning experience for me just within the span of a couple of weeks. So it is incredibly interesting, I think is the best way that I can think of to put it. Yeah. And I love it. It's such a valuable service that you guys provide. I mean, for those who don't know who Jeff is and what his team brings to the table, I would say the vast majority of the leaders in our community and most of our coaching students and a large number of proven Amazon course students are using the services of Jeff at this point, simply because it just helps you sleep better at night, knowing that you've got a policy and legal expert. His team has grown. It includes Leah, of course, who many are familiar with, but also some former Amazon employees who worked in the policy enforcement departments, right? So it's a yeah, robust a lot team. of people... Go ahead. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize we've got uh, we do have former Amazon seller performance associates that you know we've got one person who managed a team of thirty seller performance members at Amazon. So he was actually one of the team managers in seller performance, um, and he they managed everything from you know reimbursements to you know policy enforcement and account suspensions. Uh, we have another person who was on the merchant risk investigations team who actually was investigating accounts 
um, specifically around, you know, buyers, when the buyers complained about products and buyer fraud, and she would look into those cases to see if buyers were defrauding sellers or if sellers were defrauding buyers. So it was kind of an interesting role. And so we've got those two team members right now. We also might be growing. Uh, we're interviewing someone right now who has worked at Amazon for three years on their reimbursements team who handled actually processing FBA reimbursements. And so oh, nice. to see if that might be. So, yeah, we've we are trying to continuously improve and, and grow. And and with that, we're also really excited to announce that uh, one of the major benefits of the retainer is getting upgraded at no cost for our existing clients. And that is that one, you know, if anyone goes to our website now, they'll see that we do have new pricing for new clients. Existing clients have signed up at $89 or grandfathered in at $89. That price won't change. Um, but one of the big benefits we're offering that we're going to be at that we're adding over the next couple of weeks here is that we're going to be having our seller performance associates. Uh, if you opt in, you know, it's voluntary, but if you give us account permissions, we'll have our team members log in once a month and actually look at your account and audit your account health and send you a report to let you know what needs to be worked on. Oh, that's huge. And schedule, you know, any sort of cases. I'm that, turning that you know, on today. Is so. it available now? <laughs> It is. Just just it. I mean, you can send us an email and we'll manually enroll you. That's so awesome, uh, dude. But yeah, I love that. Yeah. Oh, just that's so great. So we don't have to wait to notice a problem. You guys are going to jump in once a week and maybe point some stuff out proactively that we should be paying attention to. That's great. I love it. Yeah. Well, I, we're doing that today. Or once a month, actually. So we do have we do once have an option month. where it's at, where we will have an upgraded feature for daily if people want to upgrade and have daily um, audits. But for month, if you're, if you want the monthly audits, that's complimentary and that's going to be extended to all of our retainer clients. So that's fantastic. And that's, um, you so. know, for those of us who've been grandfathered in, been with you a while, knew that it was a smart call. That's awesome. But the price is going up a little bit for those who don't use your services yet, but still a total steal compared to right. some of the horror stories I've heard of people having to pay thousands of dollars just to have a right. professional take a peek at their account and help them with a relatively minor issue. Sure. Uh, well, this, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic right. service you guys provide. In fact, you know, just to point it out, I know one of the other um, companies that does, you know, sus uh, con suspension consulting, you know, they're not a law firm, but they do consulting for suspensions. They're charging $800 for what we're now including uh, once a month for free for sellers. And that's what they're wow. charging $800 as a one-time fee to go and, your not a law firm. and look at your account health. Yeah, so, you are. Yeah. And they're not a law firm. They're just a consulting yeah. firm. So, exactly. you know, so that's, I think, you know, we're a really good value add that we're offering to sellers and that's at no charge for people that are in the retainer right now. Fantastic. So, well, I know that you were talking before we hit record today about uh, some interesting things that you're seeing a trend right now where sellers are going after other sellers and getting punished for doing so. Fill me in on that a little bit. Yeah. So this has been kind of an interesting thing. Over the last year, we've had three or four cases. I think we're up to four, maybe five cases of sellers who have been suspended by Amazon for harming another seller or attempting to harm another seller. So the first time we dealt with this was back, um, it was actually resolved last October and it, the Amazon had decided to terminate the selling relationship with the seller in question. I don't know how we managed to get them a second chance, but we worked really hard on the case and we were able to get them in a successful appeal and they were able to be given a second chance. That's in that particular fact pattern, the seller had um, filed IP complaints against another seller for jumping on their bundle. They didn't realize that their trademark did not cover what they were selling within their bundle. And, and so basically they were asserting trademark rights they didn't own. Uh, and so it was kind of an unintentional violation of trademark law on violation of terms of service. And so that's why Amazon had terminated them for harming another seller. I know we talked about that on a previous podcast where I said, don't file IP complaints against other sellers unless you know what your trademark covers. Well, the last three people that have reached out to me and two of these have been within the last week have been a little bit more nefarious. And so they were terminated by Amazon because they were having VAs go in and intentionally harm other sellers. Now, those there's different ways that the VAs were doing this, but the predominant method that seems to be being taught um, in some communities is that you can use virtual gift cards to buy inventory from your competitor, tie up their inventory, knowing that the gift cards don't have enough money to pay for the order, while the inventory is tied up, you get the buy it box 100%. You sell through all of your inventory and then they, the order, all the orders fail and their the competitor's inventory goes back live again. Uh, Amazon wow. has now been catching on to this. Yeah, they're catching the DAs. Good. <laughs> and not only are they suspending and, or terminating the buyer accounts, but they're terminating the seller accounts that benefited from the transaction. 
Fantastic. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's protecting it's the integrity see. of the free market of Amazon really is what they're doing. I love it. it that's so great. So, I love those stories where sellers try to game the system to gain an advantage over other sellers and get demolished for it. <laughs> Keep it coming, Amazon. I love when Amazon gets to play the hero role of the story, too. This is great. I love it. Well, obviously, since I represent the sellers in some of these transactions, I have to say that. Um, oh know, yeah, you're trying to protect your poor clients. The but, are but they were out there attacking other sellers. I know. So. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, my heart is always towards the yeah. sellers who are I mean, trying to run a business with integrity, man. And and so I, I'm a I'm a big fan of these new right. rules and and how they're being enforced. Me personally, <laughs> but I hope everything works out great for your clients. I I, I will say. I will say, unfortunately, there's other other communities that have been teaching these methods, and that's where the sellers didn't think there was anything wrong with it. So our clients are kind of the the innocent victims in it, in a sense, because in one case, the seller's VA came to him with this groundbreaking method that was going to make him millions in product, you know, millions in revenue. Sure. And so the VA had heard about it from another VA. You know, these are all people in the Philippines mm -hmm. that don't think about the long-term consequences because it's not their money. It's not their account. Right. And so they came up, he came up with this, you know, amazing scheme that he'd heard from another VA. Yeah. And then now our client is the one that's been busted. You know, I have the inventory of your VA. competitors so you can sell more. Well, you know, here's where the golden rule comes in right. handy. Would you want someone doing this to you? <laughs> no, then don't right. do it to other sellers, right? I mean, to me, it's that simple, but yeah, I, I hope things work it, out well. I hope they, it is that simple. Thing. You know, go forward with but it, but it's just you know i'd say this is a warning for sellers if you've heard about these methods don't do them because when you like it's not a matter of if but when when you get caught it you know you'll be done on amazon and there's really not going to be much recourse um unless you can prove that the va did it without your consent which like in one of our cases we can prove that and so wow it's going to be a tough argument but mm -hmm. you know we'll do our best Sure. And also it really comes down again, it kind of, you know, goes back to know what your VAs are doing because these VAs are acting as agents of your business. So you should have a handle, you know, pulse on what they're doing, what they're buying, where they're buying it and all that sort of stuff, because ultimately anything they do comes back on you. Yeah. So just like, you know, I think, I don't know if any, if I've ever told this story before, but like my stepbrother's an attorney and when he was moving from California to Georgia, he shipped his car across the country. And when he was getting his car delivered, the delivery driver and him got into a bit of like a, a disagreement over the car's condition. And the guy, you know, punched my stepbrother. Now my stepbrother's five foot six. He's not very big. And this guy was like six, three. So it was not a very fair fight. Oh my goodness. So my stepbrother didn't call the police, but he took pictures of the bruise. And then he sued the trucking company saying your eight, your employee was acting as your agent and you're responsible for his behavior. And he's 100% right. You know, this, when, when you have employees or VAs, you're responsible for their behavior sure. behavior. And, um, the down payment of his house was paid for by the trucking company. Oh, wow. So, you know, wow. it just goes to show, you know, it, so it just goes to show, I you know, he says it a little bit of an taking extreme a punch. example, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he does, <laughs> That's he does great. say it was worth it. So. Wow. But, well, yeah, you know, yeah obviously, uh, yeah. It's your like, account. It's under your name. You're responsible for the actions of the VAs that you hire. So, yeah, it, and, and just do these things yeah. with integrity, man. It, you can last so long in this business and do so well. Don't try to cut corners. Don't try to undermine your competitors in, in ways that you wouldn't want done to you. Yeah, but I love that. I love that uh, Amazon's able to detect this kind of behavior is something I feel good about, you know, and, and then reward the ones who are acting well for... Uh, you know, playing within the rules. So yeah, to me, this is a great story. I hope your client turns out right. well, learns their lesson. I hope everything goes well for them. But yeah, I love that Amazon's cracking down on this. Good stories, man. Yeah. So, all right. That's what we got for y'all this week. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess we've great. got more next week to talk about. Yeah, too, so. absolutely. Well, there's always interesting stories coming down the pipeline. And, and let me just remind everyone, if you're new around here, especially this is, we spent some time today with Jeff Schick and his new hire, which is a great leader from our community, Leah Modlin, who's been in our community for quite some time, built a beautiful business. And I just love that they're kind of joined forces. They're continuing to grow and serve our community and other Amazon seller communities. To find out more about the program Jeff was talking about, go to jeffschick.com and you can see the new programs listed there. And we'll have you guys back again, at least one or maybe both of you again next week, right? Yeah, perfect. Sounds good. Happy right. to be Sounds here. Great. Good to see you guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Nice to see you, you too. Well. Bye.